Sometimes when you find or admit a baby, the first thing you notice is that it's just cold, cold and unresponsive. Warming that baby is the first important step in saving its life. I'm Amy. Welcome to my channel. Um, I talk about issues in wildlife conservation and rehabilitation, as well as environmental topics and organic gardening. If you're new to wildlife rehabilitation, I have a video um, about how to become a wildlife rehabilitator uh, that I will link above and in the description section. Our bodies are made to run at a certain temperature. So for humans, that's 98.6. For fawns, it's 101. And for the opossum, it's only 95 degrees Fahrenheit. But neonates who are stressed and in shock, uh, dehydrated, often, you know, those animals in crisis are experiencing a dramatic drop in temperature. So to thermoregulate means to produce our own heat which mammals do when they get old enough. So many mammals as neonates cannot thermoregulate. So a neonate is a baby with their eyes still closed. And many wild animals, when they're born, cannot thermoregulate. They cannot control their body temperature. They rely on their mom critter to keep them warm until their body you know, starts to develop a little bit and they start to thermoregulate. So those babies are at the most risk, you know, if mom is killed and all of a sudden she's not there. That said, um, providing heat is not just for neonates. Um, any aged animal, uh, that would come in uh, to you for rehabilitation um, can need supplemental heat, uh, just like an adult human. So, um, you know, if they're in shock, they're in crisis, they're traumatized, they're stressed, they often need additional heat because their body temperature is reacting, um, you know, to uh, those stressors. So I am primarily talking about mammals here. Obviously, reptiles have a whole different way of regulating uh, their temperature. And I don't have a bird license, um, so my experience with birds is more limited because basically I did um, stabilize and then, um, you know, had them transported to a bird uh, rehabilitator. So providing warmth, um, number one. So. Um, we want to think about some of the different ways we can provide warmth. We kind of want that 85 to 90 degree uh, temperature around the baby. And there are a number of ways um, that we'll talk about in just a sec uh, to provide warmth. But number one, we want to remember that we don't want the baby uh, directly on the heat source without a way of getting away. So if you have an unconscious baby, uh, you know, a small a neonate that isn't mobile yet, you, you don't want to say, plop, here you go, you're on a heating pad, you're going to get warm now, because um, they may get too warm too fast, oh, and then you have the, you know, the opposite problem. So that baby needs to A, be next to a heat source so they're not, um, you know, possibly getting overheated. Um, or if they're crawling, you know, a, a heat source here and them here, they can have um, an option, uh, you know, when they're, when they're mobile. So another thing you can do, this is something that I have done, is... Um, Put that baby neonate, this works great for like squirrels and, and bunnies, um, in a knitted hat or a knitted, um, you know, little pouch. Uh, baby opossums also, the pouch made me think of them. Uh, but so put them in that little kind of cozy area. Don't tie the top 
shut but have it open at the top and then place that next um, to the heating pad. And so probably the most common and uh, inexpensive way of providing heat is the um, heating pad. And there are lots of different kinds. I, the, the ones that are made for pets, I like because often they have a cover you can take off and wash and the cords are a little bit sturdier for little teeth. And one important thing about heating pads, especially those made for humans, they have a shutoff device. And so the heating pad will say, you know, run for 30 minutes or run for 60 minutes, and then it'll automatically shut off. So this is very in inconvenient for us. So try to find heating pads that do not have the automatic shutoff or you will be getting up, you know, every hour on the hour throughout the night just to flip the heating pad back on. Another option is to get an incubator. Um, these are the same uh, kinds of uh, incubators that are used in hospitals. In fact, you can buy them on Amazon. The Brinsea incubators are available for purchase. The disadvantage, they are very expensive. So one of the things I talk about in my book is, you know, some fundraising ideas. There are, you know, a number of ways you can raise money uh, to afford an incubator. There is also a website called Baby Warm, which is a crowdfunding um, website, and they will help you to raise money for uh, you to get an incubator. They specifically are for people who are in wildlife rehabilitation. And so they kind of give you that platform and give you that means uh, to share with, you know, friends and followers and raising money. And then they will send you um, the incubator. And so um, this is a picture of, of mine. I did get one through uh, the Baby Warm platform. And there are some other options, especially if you need something for transportation. If you are a finder and you're transporting um, animals, uh, the ceramic disc, which I'll have a picture up of, um, are great. You heat them in a microwave and they stay warm, you know, for a couple of hours sometimes, depending on the, the size of them. Uh, the other option is the old fashioned hot water bottle. In fact, I used to just tell people to, you know, fill a soda bottle with hot water and place it down in the box with the baby. It's good to wrap up that bottle in a towel. One, because you don't want it to roll around when you're driving and, and hurt the baby. And two, because you don't want it to end up, you know, as we talked about earlier, uh, you don't want that heat you know, right up against that neonate, neonate who maybe cannot uh, move. But a hot water bottle um, is, a, is a good, you know, temporary um, fix when you're in a kind of emergency situation. So another option is heat lamps. Um, these I actually just pulled off the turtle um, enclosure uh, to use to show you. Heat lamps, um, they can be very convenient because they can sit right on top of a wire um, top of like an aquarium style enclosure. The dis Well, there are a couple of disadvantages. One, there's not much way of controlling the heat. A lot of that heat is dissipating sometimes, you know, out and above the tank. And, you know, you have to be careful with your model. Um, because they can be a fire hazard. So you always want to use caution with these lights and you want to make sure that, you know, the cords are good and secure and safe uh, before using them. You also would not want them too close um, to a baby. Um, they can get pretty warm. So heat, definitely priority number one. Um, you never want to try to, um, you know, feed 
um, or give water to an animal whose temperature is below normal because their body is you know, basically shutting down. And so you want to have that gradual warming. That's another key um, aspect. We don't want to, you know, lickety split. Here, you get on this heat pad and, and get warm fast. It does have to be a slow um, process, you know, and allowing uh, their body um, to slowly heat up and their systems to, you know, get going, their blood to get circulating and bringing oxygen throughout their body. Um, all of those things are important, so we want to, um, you know, allow that to happen uh, slowly and as naturally as possible, but at the same time, it's pretty critical, uh, so that's what we're going to, you know, do first. Um, you know, obviously, if the baby comes in and, um, you know, they're bleeding profusely or, um, you know, they have a, a, an immediate wound need, then yes, uh, you know, that's why we triage. We triage to kind of make the priorities of what needs to happen first. Um, but in general, a, a neonate who has um, just, you know, had an absent uh, parent um, and, and cold, you know, our first step is to provide warmth. Um, so you can check out my book on Amazon and feel free to leave questions or comments in the comments section. And I wish you a wonderful uh, rehab uh, season. And thank you very much for watching this video. Have a wonderful sunny day.